What is up, ninjas? My name is Samworld, and today we're going to be diving into the sounds of Chris Lorenzo's UK bass house. Now, I have to say it that way because that's the way it was requested. So, thank you for the request, my dude. Now, today, guys, we're going to be creating these sounds from scratch. So, hopefully, you can do it. But I am confident that by the end of this video, you guys will know all the techniques needed to create those style of sounds. Now, I can't believe I haven't made a video on Chris Lorenzo because him and Chris Lake have one of the best portfolios out there when it comes to dirty house music. Like all other tracks, I believe, are bangers, well produced. And these guys are top of the line. I think a lot of people have respect for what they do and of course some people say that him and chris lake you know ghost produced fisher which is a lie but if they did more props to them i don't really care i just like the music that is put out under the brand of fisher now today's tutorial guys is going to take place inside of serum we're going to be creating a lot of sounds to utilize the fm feature in it because a lot of his sounds are fm based however there are some sounds he has which can be made with just a simple square wave uh, some simple distortion so if you have an analog synth laying around make sure to try it out follow the steps in this tutorial for serum on your analog synth and i bet you it's going to sound a lot better especially when it comes to the filter work but without further ado guys let's get straight into this tutorial and as always if you want to support my channel you can head over to evilsounds.com we have tech house sound banks uh g house sound banks that i've worked hard on that i've released over the years over the past year and i hope that you guys enjoy them and i hope that you guys enjoy them but without further ado let's get straight into this tutorial on chris lorenzo All right, guys, and welcome inside of Ableton, where we're going to be getting straight to work on these clear Lorenzo bass lines. Now, the key thing with these bass lines, guys, are going to be two things. One, the shape of the sound, which is going to be the foie, foie, uh, that you can kind of go like whoop, kind of like that UK bass sound. The next thing is going to be pretty much the FM synthesis side of it. A lot of the sounds that you hear coming from Chris Lorenzo's latest tracks in that style, as well as his older ones with like AC Slater's uh, Dope Slinger. Sounds like we're about to sell some cocaine down on Compton Boulevard, my fat. Now, nah, but pretty much, those are going to be the two most important things, guys. Because as long as you get those right from there, doing the sound design is pretty much a breeze if you know what you're doing. And that's what we're going to be tackling in this video. So the first thing, like I was saying, guys, is the shape of the sound. Now, it's a lot easier to grab an, L uh, an LFO and do it. It's a lot more free will than, obviously, the the envelope section here inside of serum so we're gonna go with this guy here we're gonna put a filter here maybe a 24 db uh slope what that means it's a lot stricter as you can see 18 is a good age you can see it's kind of like gapping open uh and the more we go the more lenient it is that's the idea of that so this is a lot stricter so you can get more precise with it and what we're gonna do is just move this back we're gonna pull this up now here the important thing is to set this to envelope so that it doesn't loop envelope mode will make it so that we play the sound and start from the beginning all the time and it doesn't loop unless you tell it to by right clicking and setting a loop back point somewhere here the important thing is going to be this slope here as you can see that it, it's it's crucial that you get that right as that is what the sound is going to be all about. The other important slope here is going to be this guy as well, the ending of it, because some of the songs that Chris Lorenzo has end very fast. Some of them do have a bit of punch to them, so you can still have that punch, but still the attack. Reminds me a bit of that future bass super saw that everyone's been using and whatnot. Uh, but pretty much, you know, here for this first sound we're going to do, we're going to have a bit of a lenient attack. We're going to lower this down a bit more. All right, cool. So that's the first part is shaping the sound. That's one of the most important things that you guys need to get out of the way. You know, because traditional bass house will have basses that are something like this. And you know it, it's a little bit more like so however with these styles we don't really want that roundness to it but we want more of a fua, fua kind of gradualness so play around with that when you're creating your sound until you get it spot on i do recommend you hear with like a kick drum and whatnot to see the rhythm that it's giving you because the rhythm is being delayed because of that okay uh once we have that now we can work on the sound so when it comes to fm a lot of the times you can fm anything you can fm a saw a square but i find the best fm is usually going to be a sine wave uh so that's one thing we can do we can come in with an analog bd sign and then you know fm to a saw first to test that out in order to activate fm we got to go into warp mode and click fm from b now what's going to happen here is this saw is going to go inside of the sign and it's going to modulate it frequency wise and what that means is that we're going to start to hear a bit of the characteristics of the saw as we put this up 
All right, so we don't want to go all the way to 100%, but usually the sweet spot's going to be around here. Okay, cool. So once we have that, what we can do now is mess with this guy here. So the next important thing when it comes to FM are FM pitch ratios. What that means is here we have a one-to-one -one because they're both at the same octave. If we have this at plus one to zero, that means we have a pitch ratio of one to two as this is you know one higher and then pitch ratio of one to three, one to four, and vice versa. What that means for you is that if you want to go for a wub or a sound that has a bit more high frequencies, then you might want to go with a higher pitch ratio. The problem with that though is a lot of times you will lose body, so you got to be careful. I kind of like it here. All right, cool. Now, the next thing is to decide whether you want this sound to be in stereo or in mono. So, by default, it should be in mono if you haven't messed with the voicing. However, let's assume we want this to be wide, then we can do that and get more of a detuned vibe as well. And there we have pretty much very similar, similar sound. We're just missing that lower bass that they have in the song. Now, from here, you can choose to distort and whatnot. But the key thing with these sounds, especially this one, is to keep it simple, keep it mellow. Don't destroy it with a distortion. You know, because if you use like a diode of distortion, watch your ears. I'm going to lower the master. You know, it starts to kind of fuck up, as you can see, so you got to be really careful with that. But this one is very simple, as you guys can see. Another lead that Chris Lorenzo uses a lot is this weird saw lead that sounds very, very, very unique. Let's put it that way. So one of the ways we can recreate that maybe is utilizing like a super saw. And again, the key thing, it's it's the shaping of the sound. That's what gives the vibe. So what I'm going to do here is use a filter with maybe low 18, open it up to a, maybe all the way, have a bit of that vibe to it, envelope. An octave. So it has to have that kind of fuh, 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 fuh. maybe a bit of release too. We'll go with that. And then here, this is a cool thing. We don't have to do FM. We can do RM from A for say. And then we can put like a weird wave table here. Maybe like a, a weird one, uh, like a sign. Could work. Let's put this down. And then we'll run this at 82 minutes as well. And then we'll do, uh, let's put this up. And let's just blow, put it. And let's find one that we Plus one there. So this gives the saw a bit more of a dirtier sound, if you can see. And then we put this guy in. And then from there, we can maybe put a bit of distortion. Uh, reverb. You know, it's getting that kind of attack. But, you know, the thing here, as you can see as well, it's about experimenting. Once you got like that shape to it, like you can do a lot, experiment, just move around the knobs and try and find something that will work. Man, fam, I don't think it's going to work. It has a unique vibe for sure that it could work. But I like that RM from A, which is ring mod. But the idea here is that you can make various, various different leads with just utilizing this and, and messing around. Here I've added a chorus just to kind of give it a bit more of a brassy vibe. Uh, I've added the re... Which is not that... Just for some tone, you know, reverb at a very low decay can give the sound a little bit of life. It doesn't have to overtake. You don't have to hear it, uh, but just a bit. It makes it sound a little bit more ravey, like a rave fucking synth there. And I've gotten some, rid of some of the because it has too much of that full four mid lows there for that sound. Maybe a bit. You know, but that's one of the sounds he uses a lot as well. Um, and you can get different tonalities from using different synths as well, guys. If we keep going too, he's a huge fan of these sounds which just kind of have a very sharp cut. And what I mean by that is, for instance, we'll use a wavetable this time. We can go with maybe an FM. And then we'll have it here. Envelope. It's a very fast hit, which almost sounds like a legit bass, but it has that fuh, fuh, fuh. And he's a huge fan of that. He uses that a lot as well with some heavy ass distortion. We'll have it here. So 
something like that and then maybe a bit of the song that could give us a good vibe too you can give there we go get that right a bit of uh always mono legato so it's light but that's some nice shots they have too uh you can make this so it's more plucky it's just getting the slope right And one of the things I've heard in a lot of his songs is he likes to kind of have it like. And then he'll kind of move this to the right a bit. So now it starts to sound more like a wobble. It's pretty cool. Maybe chorus too. Okay, uh, that's a bit too much. And then from here, you know. Make it start. Give it a bit of chorus vibe. Uh, here we can do maybe uh, a sine wave as well and just that sounds nasty dude uh but uh, you know i'm trying to give you guys ideas on what you can do with the sound so hopefully you can make them yourself guys uh, we'll do one more recreation and then we'll call it for the end of the video the last time we'll have a little bit of what we talked about in the previous sound where we have that very staccato-ish vibe but in this one he uses just a simple square wave i I don't know if it's an analog sound because it's hard to get that filter vibe that he has in that track, uh, his drama free remix of Dead Mouse. Uh, but he utilizes the same technique where instead of having a straight up plucky bass, dun, 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 it has that foo, foo, foo into it. But it's such a fast that you can barely tell it's there, but it gives so much swing to it. So, for instance, here we're going to have this filter here. We'll do like a MG Low 2018. We'll lower it. We'll have this guy go like so. Envelope. So this is the normal bass, obviously, like. But what he does is a bit of resonance, and then we have that. And then we'll have it around here, maybe a little. You can't use like a saw because it's just so, so weak. But a square is like one of the heaviest wavetables you can have. So it's just getting this shape right. So that's going to give us some. You can distort it a bit if you want. Make it harder if you want. You know, I don't know. Have it closer. Longer. You know, a square, dude, it's so, so good. Like, a lot of times you don't even need to add stuff to it. But you get that nice analog vibe out of it because we're using an analog-based wavetable with a filter and the resonance. It ain't a moog, though. It ain't a moog, but it's close enough, in my opinion, to where you can kind of, like, use it. You know, see the... But anyways, guys, I hope this tutorial inspires some of you guys to try making your sounds uh, like this from scratch and encourages you to make some of these style of tracks. It's not that hard. It's all about the idea. And if you have a good idea for it, don't let the sound design get you down. I know there's not a lot of presets out there for this style of music, but hopefully, again, this tutorial can guide some of you guys to create these type of sounds. The techniques needed to make them are all here. It's just about playing around, getting the sound you want, and creating your track. But anyways, guys, hopefully you guys have a good weekend. Um, I'll see you guys next time for another video. As always, if you want to support the channel, head over to evasounds.com. I do have a G-House pack, which is close to this kind of vibe. It's a little bit harder, but who knows? Maybe you can de-harden it so you can actually use it. But take care and peace out, guys. I'll see you guys next time.